Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Bytel, and today's topic of discussion is a maximum power transfer theorem as applied to DC circuits. Our objective is to learn at which conditions a circuit delivers maximum power to a variable load resistor. Addition, we'll discuss efficiency at and at other than maximum power conditions. This lecture operates under the presumption of a marginally skilled in Thevenin's theorem, to a lesser degree, Norton's theorem and source conversion. If you're not familiar with these theorems and techniques, please take the time to check out these lectures, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. Additionally, this lecture makes use of spreadsheet and graphing software, particularly Microsoft Excel. This, or an equivalent software resource, makes an incredibly handy instructional resource when visualizing circuit properties at or near maximum power conditions. Bottom line up front, a variable load resistor will experience maximum power from a circuit when its resistance is equal to that of the Thevenin's equivalent resistance for that circuit. This is to suggest maximum power is delivered to the load when R load equals RTH. As we'll soon learn, this isn't exactly the most efficient of conditions, but does however represent peak power delivery conditions to the variable load resistor. Consider this series parallel circuit supplying variable load resistor R load. R load will receive maximum power when R load is exactly equal to the Thevenin's equivalent resistance for this circuit. By all means, pause the lecture and see if you can use Thevenin's theorem to find the Thevenin's equivalent voltage ETH and the Thevenin's equivalent resistance RTH. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. If you've been following this lecture series in its intended order, you'll realize that this is the exact same circuit we used to introduce Thevenin's theorem. Here's a review of the steps we used to determine the Thevenin's equivalent of the circuit. We need to solve for two properties, the Thevenin's equivalent voltage and the Thevenin's equivalent resistance seen by the variable load resistor. To solve for the Thevenin's equivalent voltage, we need to remove the load resistor of interest and determine the open circuit voltage. The load resistor removed from consideration, the open circuit voltage at terminals A and B would be the voltage across the resistor R2. An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates that the Thevenin's equivalent voltage seen by the variable load resistor would be 18.2 volts. To solve for the Thevenin's equivalent resistance, we need to remove the load resistor and the source, and then determine the resistance at the terminals of interest. With the load resistor removed from consideration, and the voltage source replaced with a short circuit, an ohmmeter placed at the terminals A and B would see R1 in parallel with R2 for a Thevenin's equivalent resistance of 267.1 ohms. The Thevenin's equivalent circuit seen by the variable load resistor would therefore be an 18.2 voltage source in series with a 267.1 ohm resistor in series with a variable load resistor R load. Let's use this Thevenin's equivalent circuit to demonstrate an application of the maximum power transfer theorem. The maximum power transfer theorem states the load resistor will experience maximum power from a circuit when its resistance is exactly equal to the Thevenin's equivalent resistance for that circuit. Let's see if this is the case. When our load is set to 267.1 ohms, Note that the Thevenin's equivalent voltage source, ETH, sees a total resistance of exactly twice the Thevenin's equivalent resistance. An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates the load resistor will drop half the supplied voltage, in this case, 9.1 volts. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the variable load resistor, R load at maximum power conditions will be 34.1 milliamperes. An application of the power equation demonstrates the variable load resistor will dissipate 310.5 milliwatts of power at maximum power conditions. If our load was set to any other value, lesser or greater, it will dissipate less than this amount of power. Let's prove this to ourselves by dialing our load down to 133.6 ohms, or half the Thevenin's equivalent resistance, and perform the same analysis. As an exercise, the viewer I invite you to determine the voltage across the load resistor, the current through the load resistor, and the power dissipated by the load resistor when the load resistor is set to 133.6 ohms. By all means, pause the lecture and try this yourself. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following values. When our load is set to 133.6 ohms, an application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates the load resistor will experience a reduced 6.1 volt drop. Application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the variable load resistor, our load at less than maximum power conditions to be 45.4 milliamperes. An application of the power equation demonstrates the variable load resistor will dissipate 276 milliwatts of power at less than maximum power conditions. In these reduced resistance conditions, our load, being a smaller resistance than maximum power, draws more current, however, drops less voltage, and therefore dissipates less power. Let's switch tactics and crank our load up to 534.3 ohms, or twice the Thevenin's equivalent resistance. As an exercise to the viewer, I invite you to determine the voltage across the load resistor, the current through the load resistor, and the power dissipated by the load resistor when the load resistor is set to 534.3 ohms. By all means, pause the lecture and try this yourself. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following values. 
An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates the load resistor will experience an increased 12.1 volt drop. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the variable load resistor R load at less than maximum power conditions to be 22.7 milliamperes. Finally, an application of the power equation demonstrates the variable load resistor dissipates 276 milliwatts of power at less than maximum power conditions. At these conditions, R load, being a larger resistance, drops more voltage, however, draws less current, and therefore dissipates less power. You note when R load is less than RTH, it experiences less voltage, more current, and less power. Similarly, when our load is greater than RTH, it experiences greater voltage, less current, and less power. That's the point. At maximum power conditions, our load is a point when two interrelated values, voltage and current, form a maximum power product. We could easily perform the same analysis for a range of load resistance values from zero, representing short circuit conditions, up to infinite ohms, representing open circuit conditions, but this would take all day and then some. It's for this reason we use spreadsheet software to visualize the implications of maximum power transfer theorem. For the purposes of this analysis, we'll assume open circuit conditions, i.e. infinite resistance, is approximated at extremely high resistance, let's say 10 kilo ohms. If we're to plot voltage across and current through the load resistor as a function of load resistance from zero to 10 kilo ohms, we obtain the following graphs. These results should be pretty self-explanatory. At short circuit conditions, i.e. when the variable load resistor R load is adjusted to zero ohms, the voltage drop across it is zero volts and rapidly increases as R load increases. At approximated open circuit conditions, when R load is extremely large, voltage approaches the maximum drop of 18.2 volts. A plot of current in blue is just the opposite. At short circuit conditions, i.e. when the variable load resistor R load is adjusted to zero ohms, Current is at a maximum of roughly 68 milliamperes and precipitously decreases as our load increases. An approximated open circuit condition is at the far right of the graph. When our load is extremely large, much, much less current flows. In summary, as the load increases, voltage starts low and goes high, and current starts high and goes low. Power, however, is the product of voltage and current. In short circuit conditions, the far left High current flows through the load resistor, yet it experiences no voltage drop. In short circuit conditions, power dissipated by the zero ohm load resistor would be zero watts. In approximated open circuit conditions, the far right voltage drop across the load resistor is high, yet no current would flow through it. In true open circuit conditions, power dissipated by the load resistor would be zero watts. In between these two zero watt regions is where the magic happens. Traveling left to right from short circuit conditions, to approximated open circuit conditions, voltage increases and current decreases. Along the way, voltage and current form a maximum power product that peaks when our load equals the Thevenin equivalent resistance and quickly subsides. If we were to zoom in on the region surrounding peak power, you'll notice regions on the low side shoulder of the power peak experience more current draw, but less voltage drop. Regions on the high side shoulder of the power peak experience more voltage drop, but less current draw. The maximum power point is a compromised condition in which two interrelated voltage and current values form a maximum power product. Note that the power curve peaks out at roughly 310.5 milliwatts in the region of 267.1 ohms as expected. Load resistances on either side will experience less than maximum power. Regions where our load is on either side of the peak, like our two representative examples at half the Thevenin's equivalent resistance and twice the Thevenin's equivalent resistance, would be in the shoulder regions of the peak power curve. The maximum power transfer theorem really is that simple. A variable load resistor will receive maximum power from a circuit when its resistance is exactly equal to the Thevenin's equivalent resistance for that circuit. The only tricky parts are, one, obtaining the correct Thevenin's equivalent circuit, and two, using it correctly. Note the load resistor is but one of two resistors in the equivalent circuit, the other being RTH. Again, at maximum power conditions, our load drops half the Thevenin's equivalent voltage. The other half of ETH is dropped across RTH, which also experiences the same current given that Thevenin's equivalent is a pure series circuit. This is to suggest that at maximum power conditions, RTH dissipates just as much power as our load, which leads us right into a discussion on efficiency. It needn't be surprising that maximum power conditions are not efficient conditions. One would not consider using a dragster to perform the daily commute, 
nor one would consider entering a Prius in a tractor pull. Not only would you lose, you'd look like a total nerd doing so. Maximum power conditions are inefficient as efficient conditions are less than powerful. At maximum power conditions, an application of the power equation demonstrates the source delivers 620.9 milliwatts of power to this system, of which only 310.5 milliwatts is put to beneficial use by the load resistor. The remaining 310.5 milliwatts of power dissipated by the Thevenin's equivalent resistor would be considered a loss to this system. Efficiency of the ratio of usable power output over input. Of the 620.9 milliwatts delivered to the system by the source, only 50% is put to beneficial use by the load resistor. At conditions other than maximum power, efficiency changes. Consider a case when our load is twice the Thevenin's equivalent resistance or 534.3 ohms. During these conditions, V load equals 12.1 volts, I load equals 22.7 milliamp years, and power dissipated by the load equals 276 milliwatts. The source, however, delivers a total of 414 milliwatts to this system, of which 276 milliwatts, roughly 66.7%, are being put to good use. Any power dissipated by RTH is considered a loss to this system. In this case, power delivered to the variable load resistor is less than maximum power conditions. However, it's being used more efficiently. If one was to plot a graph of efficiency as a function of load resistance, one would find that at maximum power conditions, when R load equals RTH, efficiency is a paltry 50%, however, increases as resistance increases. At conditions other than maximum power, power delivery is less than maximum, but depending upon which side of the maximum power condition you're on, efficiency can be more or less than 50%. In summary, a load resistor will experience maximum power when its resistance is equal to that of the Thevenin's equivalent resistance for the circuit under inspection. At maximum power conditions, the load resistor will always experience a voltage drop of half the Thevenin's equivalent voltage, and the circuit will operate at 50% efficiency. Load resistances less than maximum power conditions will experience more current but less voltage and as a result dissipate less power. Similarly, load resistances greater than maximum power conditions will experience more voltage but less current and as a result, dissipate less power. All right, this concludes the theoretical portion of this lecture. Is that it? Now, your exposure to the maximum power transfer theorem is far from over. Really, the only way to understand maximum power transfer theorem is by doing the maximum power transfer theorem. In this spirit, stay tuned, because I've got another complete lecture coming your way real soon featuring nothing but applications of Thevenin's theorem and the maximum power transfer theorem. Believe me, you'll get plenty of practice. In conclusion, we learn a variable load resistor will experience maximum power from a circuit when its resistance is exactly equal to the Thevenin's equivalent resistance for that circuit. Additionally, we discussed efficiency and took a look at voltage, current, power, and efficiency curves for varying load resistances. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.